Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to today's Play Attention professional webinar. My name is Gwen Sorley, and I will be your host today. I really do appreciate you taking some time out today to chat a little bit more about your different options as a play attention professional. Just a couple of things I want to mention. Um, for some reason, I've noticed that uh, Zoom has changed a couple little things. So if you're seeing a double view of me right now, you can just minimize that upper view. Uh, hopefully that is not bothersome to you and hopefully you can just click away from that. Also, we are recording this event. So at the end of the webinar, I am going to send this out immediately because I know many of you are going to want to review it again or share it over the weekend. So we'll make certain that everyone gets a copy immediately. So at any time, if you have any questions or comments, please do use the chat box and I will try to address all of your questions as we proceed through. And uh, just know that all of your questions really are appreciated and enhance everyone's experiences. So please do ask your questions. If for some reason I don't get to them, I will get to them again at the end where we'll have a little bit longer FAQ. So again, my name is Gwen Sorley and we're going to be chatting about your different options as a play attention professional. Now we are going to cover several areas today. And I want to recognize that I know some of you here have not seen Play Attention before. And so this is kind of your first introduction. And then there are others who have been using Play Attention for many, many years. Um, I see many of you here today that have used Play Attention for 15 plus years. Some of you are newer clients. So just know that we have a very diverse audience. So there are some things that if you're a current client, you may have already incorporated, but I think that this is a good time to reflect on what you're doing now within your program, and then also look at the different options you may not have yet incorporated so that you can expand. And if you're new, I know this is going to be a lot of information for you, so just kind of take it all in because my end goal is just to expose you to all of your different options. And then at the end, we uh, consider registering everyone for an individual consultation where we can really address your specific needs and talk about the areas that you want to incorporate into your practice. So I think that we need to start with, what are you doing currently? And I know that many of you here are clients who have a professional setting and you're working with either children or adults and you're working with them on counseling and life coaching and tutoring and helping them strengthen executive function. And many of you are teaching your clients tips and strategies to help them on their day-to-day, -day, right? So you may be teaching them how to use a Pomodoro timer or how to keep up with everything in a calendar or use a to-do list. And those are all bridges, right? You're helping them really use these strategies and these tips so that their daily life can be a little bit easier. The difficulty with that for many of the clients we work with is that we have to simultaneous work, simultaneously work on specific cognitive skills that right now are weak for them, but are required for strong executive function. So if you reflect on what you're currently doing, are you providing your clients with the most comprehensive approach available where we're providing strategies but then we're also doing skill building at the same time. And the reason this is critical is because if you think about all of the skills you need in order for those strategies to be successful, there are many. And many of these cognitive skills are weak for our clients. And, uh, you know, I, I talk about this one woman I was chatting with just a, a while ago, and she said, I know how to do a to do list. I start every morning with a to-do list because, you know, I've been struggling with ADHD for many years and everyone keeps telling me, well, just write a to-do list. 
And so every morning I start with a to-do list and I do nothing with it. It can create a fantastic to-do list, but I don't do anything with it. So if you think about that client and all of the skills she needs in order for that to-do list to be successful, because it's not that she's not trying, it's not that she doesn't understand a to-do list can help, it's the skills that are required, right? So in order for that to-do list to be really beneficial to her, she first has to work on her memory so that she remembers she has a to-do list. Then she has to be able to sustain her attention so that when she starts number one, she's able to sustain her attention all the way to the end of that task before moving on. We also have to help her filter distractions. How does she filter distractions? So she doesn't start task number one and then suddenly get distracted by the laundry that she thinks suddenly needs to be done. Uh, and then also impulse control. So she doesn't work on number one and then impulsively jump down to number three. So there are a lot of skills just in that example that we need to improve. In order for that strategy to be successful, we have to improve her memory. We have to improve her ability to sustain her attention and complete a task. We have to improve her ability to filter distractions. And we also need to help her develop that ability to control her impulsivity. So, and we could even add in a big part of executive function, which is emotion regulation. Because when you see individuals procrastinating and not even starting the tasks at all, we oftentimes think it's about time management, but procrastination has more to do about emotion regulation and how you feel about the task at hand. So there are so many skills we need to address. So I want you to think about, again, reflect on what you're currently providing your clients and can you take it a step further? If you're giving tips and strategies, fantastic. But now can we offer them skill building so that those tips and strategies are really beneficial? The opposite is true too. Maybe you are a play attention provider. And if you're a play attention provider and you're working on all of these skills, are you also providing them with those tips and strategies? Make certain that you are so you kind of bridge that gap. You're giving them the skills and then give them some strategies to use along with it. So what makes play attention? Uh, why is my, oh, where we go? I, my slides weren't moving there. What makes play attention really different and how play attention will set you apart is important. Whether you are a new professional client or you've been using play attention for many years, it's important for you to understand why you're different. What is it about play attention that sets you apart from any other program available? Well, first, we have been doing neurocognitive training for almost 30 years. It's be 30 years in, in uh, next year, actually, 30 years. And uh, we were the pioneers in neurocognitive training. So we were the first individuals to incorporate feedback-based technology with cognitive skill training and behavior shaping. Now, our body wave technology, our NASA-inspired body wave technology, is this specially designed armband. On the back, there are three sensors, so that armband simply rests on your arm, and it monitors the brain activity that tells us how attentive you are. And that is truly an advancement in feedback technology. There are no other programs available that have a body-based system available. So that really sets you apart. And being able to monitor brain activity through the body is a true enhancement, which really enhances your client's experience. Because remember, a lot of your clients have some difficulties putting things on the head. It's uncomfortable, it's invasive. So we've had to really work hard to advance that technology and provide a system that is easy for you to use and also very effective. 
So we incorporate that feedback technology with specific cognitive skill training that pinpoints the different cognitive skill areas that right now are weak for your clients, but are required for strong executive function and also behavior shaping. And the behavior shaping component is a, a real, um, it's very powerful, I should say, in that you're allowing your clients to get a one-to-one -one correlation on how certain behaviors affect their attention. And then you're going to use that information to help them learn how to control those behaviors not conducive to good attention. So it is a very powerful component. So again, play attention. We've been doing neurocognitive training for almost 30 years. And it is the only program available that integrates feedback-based technology with cognitive skill training and behavior shaping. That's what our patents are based on, that integration to provide you with the most comprehensive approach available. Now, I want to share with you right now a video of one of my clients because I want all of you to see some of you have never experienced play attention. So I do want you to see someone actually using the program and what that feedback looks like. And those of you who have been using Play Attention, I want you to watch my student and really reflect on that process that you're providing your clients currently. So my client that I'm going to share with you is Ty. And in this video, he is nine years old. And I'm going to let you, I'm going to let him talk you through the process, but we're going to see him doing attention stamina. And what we're teaching him here is how to direct and sustain his attention at will, much like being able to pay attention to the teacher in the classroom. And what I really want you to watch is the process because he's been using play attention with me for about six months in this video. And you're going to notice he knows exactly what it takes for him to get into that attentive state not because I've told him what to do, right? Because usually we're trying to just tell them what to do, sit still, eyes on me, pay attention. But through neurotechnology, we provide him an experience where he actually sees his attentive state in real time. He feels what he's doing and he's allowed to practice very specific cognitive skills. So he's learned his own strategies through immediate feedback. And that is something only neurotechnology can provide. So I'm going to switch screens here and I'm going to share a tie with you. It'll just take a moment. Uh, so you'll be able to actually see what our feedback looks like. Play attention, stamina. Okay. And which character are you going to be? I want to be the submarine. All right. And how does this game work? It works all with your mind, and if you're paying attention or not, if you're paying, if you're not paying attention, he'll go high. If you are, you he'll go low, and we want him low. Good. So how are you going to get him low? Um, by paying attention and all with your mind. Good. Now let's play. Enjoy the video. Now I'm going to try to bring him back down. 
and it's but and and it's all with your mind. Just remember that. So I hope you were able to see that and hear Kai's explanation of attention stamina. And did you notice that once it started, he sat back, he got very relaxed. And once he was in that attentive state, he was able to start pushing that character down to the bottom of the ocean. And then you notice that he even leaned a little forward and took a deep breath so that relaxation, those deep breaths, those are all strategies he's learned through constant and immediate feedback. And providing your clients with that constant and immediate feedback regarding their attentive state allows them to develop the self-regulation and self-monitoring they need to not only recognize when they're paying attention, but recognize when they're not paying attention and more importantly, once he is not paying attention and he recognizes it, did you notice what he was able to do? He was able to bring himself right back and self-regulate, bring himself back to that attentive state all on his own. And so then again, that is the power of neurotechnology, allowing them to see their attentive state in real time and practice very specific skills. So when you think about your clients, Ty is a very typical client that some of you may be working with, right? He's a little nine-year-old boy with ADHD. So many of you may be working with children, primarily those individuals with ADHD. But what I want you to remember is that there are a lot of clients you can potentially work with when you're working with play attention. So we do recommend they're at least five years old, but you can work on up through adulthood. And yes, a lot of our clients have ADHD, but really what you're looking at are individuals who have weak executive function. And there are a lot of different factors that can inhibit the development of executive function, one of which is ADHD. So many of you will have those clients. However, there's also individuals with autism, individuals struggling with anxiety, individuals who have had a traumatic brain injury or suffered stroke or are in early onset dementia. It can be even those individuals who haven't gotten into those early stages of dementia, but they want to keep their mental capacities sharp. So you are able to work with all of these individuals. So when you're thinking about your business plan, think about all of the different individuals that you can really help thrive and succeed through play attention training. Your main goal is to make certain that you can address those cognitive skills that right now are weak, but required for strong executive function. And if you have questions about the individuals that you're working with or that you are thinking about working with, you can go ahead and type those questions in the chat box, and I'd be happy to discuss that with you. So now when you're thinking about how to set up your program, um, or if you've already started using Play Attention, you may have started with the Play Attention Professional System. So when you start with the Play Attention Professional System, that means that you would have a Play Attention System and you are working in one-on-one -on -one types of situations where you have one coach working with one of your clients. And you can schedule those clients back to back throughout the day. Now, um, when you think about who will that play attention coach be, who are you going to designate on your staff that will be that coach for your clients? It does not have to be a certified staff member. It can be one of your assistants if you want to train an assistant to do the actual play attention training. 
So you can keep that in mind too, as you're thinking about developing your business. Now, Renee asks, can this program be used with clients who have experienced environmental trauma? Absolutely. Um, we've had a lot of individuals, and I'm glad that you asked that question, Renee, because um, trauma is one of those factors, right, that can inhibit that development of executive function. And I think that it's important that we all understand as well that it's very rare that there's only going to be one issue, right? There's typically comorbidity where it may be ADHD and trauma, ADHD and trauma and anxiety. So you're looking at a variety of issues when you're working with play attention, but that's a very good question, Renee, because a lot of our clients have experienced trauma in the past. Mm. Now, when you do your play attention professional system, and again, this is if you're working on one-on-one -on -one uh, sessions with your clients, you're going to have your body wave technology. So you have your body wave armband. You'll have your six core cognitive training exercises. And I'm going to go through those different exercises with you. Those are considered the foundations of executive function because remember, we're integrating the feedback technology with specific cognitive skill training. You're going to have an unlimited user license. So you'll have your system and you can enroll as many students into the program that you need to. There's never any relicensing fee. You just continue to enroll clients into your program as needed. You're going to be assigned a personal executive function coach. That's one of our coaches here on staff to assist you every step of the way. And that person is going to teach you how to take the information you have on this individual and customize their plan. That person is also going to take you and any staff members through a practice session just to make sure you're real comfortable with everything before you start working on your sessions officially. And you have unlimited technical and educational support with a lifetime membership. I'm sorry, I'm covering part of my words here. Um, so all of this is included in your play attention professional system. Now, when we think about the cognitive exercises, that's really important to understand that the very first exercise you saw Ty doing was attention stamina, and that is his ability to direct and sustain his attention at will. So if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, these are the modules that come standard with your program. So attention stamina, Visual tracking, that's a great one if the teacher ever says, you know, she does great when I stand right next to her, but as soon as I walk away, she's out the window and out the door, and then she has that diffused attention where she's paying attention to a little bit of everything. So we work on staying very focused and visually tracking. Task completion, that's that ability to start a task right away. Keep your attention just on that one task until completion. So that 15 minutes of homework takes 15 minutes and not two or three hours. Or a lot of our adults, they'll say, you know, I'm exhausted at the end of the day. I've been really busy, but I finished nothing. So that ability to start and complete. Short-term memory is the ability to remember dates, names, facts. Filtering distractions, being able to filter distractions, both auditory and visual. And then we have the academic bridge, which actually focuses even more on that transfer and generalization. An academic bridge is where you're going to actually have your clients do real homework, do their work from the office while connected to the body wave system. Because remember, the body wave system is not monitoring where your eyes are. It's monitoring how attentive you are. So as long as they're paying attention, to their reading, their math, their databasing, writing a report, whatever it may be. They'll hear from the computer, good, great. If they start to drift, they'll hear focus, and then they know they have to, they have to get back on track to complete that assignment. Now, for many of you who are current play attention professionals, if you have not yet upgraded your software, you really want to look into that because we just put out an upgrade a few months ago, where we 
make a academic bridge a separate component so you can incorporate it into your session or you can do an entire session just with academic bridge very easily. So if you want more information on that upgrade, if you have not yet upgraded to 6.4, just type in upgrade in that chat box and we'll make certain that we reach out to you. Now, those are the foundations of executive function. Remember, there's a beginner, intermediate, and advanced skill option. So there are certain benchmarks your clients will have to reach before moving up to intermediate and then to advanced. And when we move them up, we tie in processing speed, impulse control, distractors, and um, transitions, mental flexibility. Okay. So now, in addition to the foundations, you can always add on modules from our masterclass, and you can add these on at any time. Working memory is our most popular one. So remember, working memory is the ability to hold information on your mental uh, sticky note, hold on to that information in order to complete a task. So for us as adults, the classic is, you know, you walk into a room, and once you get into that room, you have absolutely no idea why you're there. You know you went into that room for a reason, but weak working memory causes us to lose that information. So working memory for students is reading comprehension and higher levels of mathematics, really critical to everything you do throughout the day. Auditory processing is the ability to follow through with multiple step verbal instructions. Hand-eye coordination is more about small motor control, Social skills is being able to pick up on social cues, um, so you're able to recognize the look and respond appropriately. Spatial memory is remembering where things are located. And finally, mindfulness. I'm going to go into mindfulness a little bit more because we have some exciting new applications available. Um, but, you know, we hear so much about how mindfulness helps with the symptoms of ADHD, and that's true. However, we can't look at someone with ADHD and say, now I want you to practice mindfulness because mindfulness is hard. It's hard for all of us, but especially if you have that scattered mind. So all of our mindfulness applications provide you with immediate feedback regarding your mindful state so that we can truly enhance that practice. So I want you to look at all of these modules. If you have not yet started your program, you can start looking at these modules and customizing your own plan for your clients. If you are a current client and you have not yet incorporated some of those masterclass modules, these are some that you may want to start considering, especially as we get into the upcoming months where you're going to have some summer programs going on. Just know what you want to incorporate into your program. And if you have questions specifically about any of those, please do let me know so that we can follow up and give you a little bit more information about each module or jump on uh, your computer and show you what those look like. All right. So it uh, looks like many of you uh, are requesting some additional information. So just know that I do see your chats and we will follow up with you. So again, if you look at all of these cognitive areas, remember our end goal is to improve these foundational skills because these are the skills that are required for strong executive function. So if you want to improve executive function, which includes organization, prioritizing, mental flexibility, emotion regulation, all of those processes require these cognitive skills. Because if you think of just one of those areas, if we think of emotion regulation, in order for you to be able to control your emotions, you have to be able to pay attention to the entire situation. You have to be able to process that information, control your impulsive nature to just impulsively respond. You also have to have strong memory so that you can draw on prior information or prior experiences to make an appropriate decision. So again, all of those cognitive skills you're working on in every single play attention session. So every time you do a play attention session, you're strengthening executive function. So that is our professional system. Now, if you are more interested, instead of one-on-one -on -one sessions, if you're interested in offering small group training, 
or distance training, then you want to consider iLab. There is a lot involved in iLab. So if you are interested in small group training or distance training, then I truly do recommend that you set up a consultation with us so that we can take you through all of those features. Because there are so many exciting features that you can incorporate and really streamline your work working with multiple clients, whether they're right there in your office or at a distance. So iLab allows you, if you look at my setup here on the screen, you'll notice that uh, I have a coach computer where I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a client, but then I have four other clients who are working independently. I could, in this scenario, also have a client who is 1,500 miles away and has uh, started his or her play attention session at the same time. And I will see all of my clients' avatars on my screen, and I will see real-time streaming data. So it will say to me, Sharon is working on attention stamina. She's been working on attention stamina for four minutes. She's 73% attentive. I'll receive all of that live ongoing streaming data so that I can monitor small groups or groups at a distance very, very easily. Also, it'll give me alerts. So if I have a student like Stephanie who has not been working for a couple of minutes, it'll say Stephanie's been idle for 40 seconds. So I know I need to go ahead and check up on Stephanie. Um, there is video and audio capability. So I can have a live chat with my clients, just like I'm chatting with you right now. That's all incorporated within the Play Attention iLab system. You don't need a third party program. I can actually start a session with you. I can see your live streaming data and I can see you and have a conversation with you uh, just like you're with me right in the office, but we might be working at a very big distance away. So all of that is incorporated into iLab. So remember, if you're looking to expand your program, this is a really exciting way to do that. Uh, Mia says, do they need headphones in the iLab? You know, that's a good question. I would say if you're doing iLab in the center, then yes, that's a good idea because of course there is sound from the computer um, on the different exercises. So as to limit the distractions for the other students, I would recommend that you have headphones in the lab. Now, if you are working at a distance, not as important, unless that's just more comfortable for the individual. Good question, Mia. Now, also what iLab allows you to do, not only does it have all of these great features, and again, we can go through all of those features with you in a consultation so you get a good understanding of what you can do, but it also gives you an option to offer lots of different flexible packages when you're working with clients. So maybe they want one-on-one -on -one training sessions in your office. And this is just a sample on the left-hand side of the screen, um, just a sample of what one of our uh, professionals do. Uh, not something that you have to do, but it's an example, okay? So you can just do one-on-one -on -one sessions in your, in your office, or you could offer small group sessions with iLab. You could also do that distance training, where maybe you're working with each client at a distance twice a week and you're doing those live training sessions and you're in your office and they're at home or in their office and you're doing those live data, that those live streaming sessions. You could even say, okay, if you don't want two live sessions, we'll do one live session and you do your other session on your own independently or I'll do one live session with you and you can do a couple of sessions throughout the week on your own, depending on your time and what you've set up with that client as far as scheduling. You could also do um, a hybrid training where maybe they do distance training for seven sessions and then on their eighth session, they actually come into your, into your office to meet with you. And you could also have a wild card training where they talk to you about what would look 
best for them? What type of schedule would be best for them? And you can kind of talk through that with them and the different options and create a session, a package that works best for them. Uh, Nurham says, online sessions, do we post the armband to the clients or totally different system? That's a good question. So um, Nurhan, when you're doing distance training, you are correct. They will need the body wave system at their office or at their home. So there are a couple of ways you can do that. One is that some of our professional clients have additional iLab systems that they lease out as part of their package. And then when the client graduates, they have those uh, systems returned. Others have their end client actually purchase the iLab system so that when their client graduates, they still have the ability to use their system themselves or maybe with other family members. Also, we have some professionals who actually have the client purchase their own system and then they have a buyback system, which is really brilliant way to do it. Uh, so there are some different ways you can do that, Nurhan, and I'd be happy to discuss that with you further. Dan says, how many sessions are recommended per week? Dan, we do recommend that you work at least an hour per week, and that hour could be broken up. So the reason I say two here is because most of our professionals find that when they're working with clients, usually two 30-minute sessions in a professional setting works best. Um, but you can be flexible on that. So if you want to, if, especially if you're doing distance training, you could do one 30 minute session live with them and two of their independent sessions might be, you know, 15 minutes a piece. So you can be flexible, but the time is what's really important. And we do recommend at least an hour per week. Now, when we talked about, so that is so far we've reviewed how we're different, right? What types of, um, uh, what makes you and sets you apart from everyone else around you? And that's the integration of feedback with cognitive skill training and behavior shaping, one-on-one -on -one sessions. You can do distance training or small groups. We talked about all of the cognitive skills that you can address within play attention. So you may be wondering, how do I know how to customize their plan? How do I know what they need? Now, many of you probably already use some type of assessment tool. And if you do, your executive function coach can look at the assessments you currently use and advise you on how to take that information and customize their plan. If you are looking for an assessment tool that you can use maybe pre, mid, and post play attention, we have available the FOCUS assessment. Now, FOCUS is a third-party um, program. However, you can go through your accreditation training through us. And we use it with many of our clients and find it very beneficial. Now, although remember, play attention is going to track progress over time in each of the cognitive skill areas, we like to use focus as that other assessment so that we're not just looking at how they're progressing within play attention, but how they're applying the skills that they're learning in other areas. So the pre-assessment allows us to get a good idea of their um, constructs of attentional control, and I'm going to go over those with you. And then we use that to pinpoint the different areas we want to put into their program. When we do it mid-training, which is about 20 hours into play attention, it allows us to see how they're progressing and what we may need to modify. And then post-evaluations is at that 40-hour mark where we're looking at graduating them from the program. Are they actually ready? So this is how we use focus and we can help you if you want an additional assessment for your practice. So, so focus is a CPT. It's a continuous performance test, which measures four constructs of attentional control. So it takes 20 minutes. It is computer based. And at the end of the 20 minutes, we receive a full report that tells us how that individual performed compared to the performance of their peers. 
And we look at four constructs, consistency, performance, impulse control, and their ability to deal with distractors, both auditory and visual. And once we have that report, we're able to have a conversation with those individuals. So if it's a child, like the, the report you see here, this was a six-year-old child, and this allowed us to have a conversation with that parent. You know, she's lower than the norm. Kara is lower than the norm in the area of consistency. So what does this look like in the classroom? Well, if you're lower than the norm in the area of consistency, that typically means that she has a hard time starting assignments right away, keeping her attention on that assignment until completion. It means that she may be very inconsistent in her performance, meaning one day she knows all of her math facts, and then the next day it looks like she's never heard them before. So those are the types of things we're looking at. And if this is all confirmed, not only from the assessment, but also in your conversation, then you know right away, for her, we're going to incorporate attention stamina, we're going to incorporate uh, time on task and academic bridge. So we use all of this information to pinpoint all of those different cognitive skill areas that are weak now, but again, required for executive function. And we can give the parents or the adult using the program visual. Right now, she's at 24%. Our end goal is going to be after play attention training, we want to push that all the way up above that 51% mark. So it gives them a very visual representation of our roadmap. Where do we want to go with this training? So you see that you can then have pre and post evaluation. So this was actually Cara's pre and post evaluation. And in her consistency, that is a positive construct. So the higher the number, the better. Remember, I told you our, our goal was to get up above that 51%. And, uh, and you'll notice that it changes with age. It does get a little bit more towards the right. So uh, when she took the pre-assessment, she was at 24%. After, after training with play attention, she was well above our goal. She was at 88%. So you can show this to the parents and use that information to determine when to graduate. Also, you can look at our impulsivity. This is considered a negative construct. So the lower the number, the better. You can see she was at 88%. She was, she was very impulsive when she was six years old. And our goal would be to get 14% or lower. Well, you can see through play attention training, she was 1% after play attention training. So this is a great documentation to look at pre, mid, and post. So again, you can go through that accreditation training. We can chat further about the focus assessment. I can provide you with a demo so you can see what it looks like, experience it. Um, and that's a really good way to evaluate, evaluate your clients. Now, in addition to all of the different cognitive skill areas we have available, we have been introducing more and more mindfulness apps. Because again, mindfulness really does help with the symptoms of ADHD. It is very critical in taming that inter internal dialogue that oftentimes gets us off track, right? A lot of your individuals that you're working with right now have anxiety, they have a constant running mind, they have that internal dialogue, and helping them remain in the present moment is very critical to this whole process. So some of these mindfulness applications that we have available are incorporated right into your play attention program, whereas others are actually um, uh, applications that will be stored separate. So Da Vinci's Candle, this is exciting. And some of you who um, are current play attention uh, professionals, you may not have even seen this yet because this was just released last week. This is a separate application specifically designed for mindfulness training. Lotus is one that you may have already incorporated into your practice. 
And then we have the mindful media player. So right now, I want to just show you a little snippet of Da Vinci's Candle. Now, remember, although I said it's not going to be part of your play attention menu, it's a separate application that will be on your desktop. They will be utilizing BodyWave system because the mindfulness applications are utilizing that BodyWave system to tell you when you're in the present moment and when you're not in the present moment. So I'm going to show you a quick, it's just a minute long video that explains Da Vinci's candle so you can get an understanding of how we enhance that mindfulness practice by actually giving you a visual representation of what it means to be in the present moment. Play Attention's mindfulness activity takes you to the serenity of Leonardo da Vinci's lab, where you'll practice mindfulness using your body wave armband. You'll see the hourglass begin your session. The candle responds to your mindful state, staying fully bright when you are most mindful. The flame will shrink if you lose your mindful state. Calmly regulate your breathing to maintain a mindful state. Call <laughs> Very exciting program there that incorporates that mindfulness practice with neurotechnology. You notice that when you are in that mindful state, the candle becomes very bright. And when you lose your mindful state, it gets a little bit dimmer. So that is now available for you. If you want more information on that, please do write candle and we'll make certain that you get more information on that if you're a current client. Now, also we have Lotus, which you may have already incorporated. Lotus is part of Play Attention. And you'll see that lotus flower in the middle of the screen. Once you have your mind in the present moment, you're able to start opening the petal on the flower. If you start thinking, when's my next appointment? When do I have to make that phone call? What's my meeting going to be about? That petal starts to close and you have to bring yourself back in order to continue. So giving them real-time feedback regarding their mindful state. And then finally, our mindful media player with our mindful media library, which is very exciting. It is a separate application, but it utilizes that body wave technology. And you can import any type of media file into that media uh, player. And then it's activated by your mindful state. So if you bring in a video, you have to get into that mindful state in order for the video to begin. If you lose your mindful state, the video is going to close, stop and you have to bring yourself back in order to continue. And uh, so you can use your own audio or video files, but we also have a mindful media library subscription, which is so nice. We have breathing exercises, positive affirmations, daily gratitude exercises, puzzles of positivity, they're all activated by your mindful state. You can actually purchase these um, media files separately from our e-store, or you can have a subscription where you get three new videos every single month. And uh, they are really beautiful and very calming and very much um, engaging and keeps you in that mindful state. So that is also one of our mindful applications. We're going to have a webinar specifically on mindfulness next week, and uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about that application during that. So in addition to everything we've talked about so far, as I mentioned, I'm going to give you kind of a bird's eye view of all of your options. And then we do want to follow up with you to talk about your specific needs and your interests. So we've talked about the professional, 
iLab, your different cognitive exercises. We've talked about our mindfulness applications. Now, another option for you is to become a Play Attention Certified Provider. And the reason we started the Certified Provider Program is because we have so many clients who are fantastic at working with children and working with adults and helping individuals develop executive function. And they're great at that. However, marketing is sometimes a whole nother profession, isn't it? And marketing your program can be very time consuming and it can be costly. So our certified provider program is specifically designed to help you get the word out there and really be comfortable and knowledgeable on how to present play attention to your community. So with the certified provider program, you have access to our Google uh, Classroom training. So you'll be um, enrolled in our Google Classroom and you will learn how to properly introduce play attention to your community. You'll have a certification exam. And once you pass that exam, you'll have access to our online marketing portal where you will be uh, given access to many marketing guides to help you engage clients and uh, really know how to follow up with potential clients and also a lot of marketing materials that you can simply put your contact information on. So you don't have to recreate materials. They're all done for you. All you do is download them and then put your information on those materials. Also, you have access to monthly content. So each month we have a bundle with a theme. So for example, one month we did ADHD and sleep as our theme. And so all of our certified providers receive a PowerPoint with a full script so that you can provide clients, current clients and potential clients information and webinars on ADHD and sleep. Also an ebook that was on that topic that you can put your contact information on and lots of social media posts that you can just put your information on and put up on your social media. So it is a real time saver in that all of your materials for every month are pre-made for you. You have your full script. You have all the information you need to really be the expert in your field. So that is the Play Attention Certified Provider option. And that is an additional option for you um, from your Play Attention professional system, okay? So I want you right now to think creatively. What can you offer your clients now based on everything we discussed? This is one idea that uh, one of our current Play Attention professionals is doing. And I'm sure there are many play attention professionals that are offering some type of summer program, but what can you do? You could have a summertime play attention brain boost academy where you have a special play attention program running throughout the summer, not only for children, remember, but your adults as well. You could incorporate a lot of different components into your program, maybe more of the mindfulness applications that you haven't yet started, or perhaps you could use Academic Bridge in a different way, maybe have your regular play attention sessions and then have clients coming in for supplemental tutoring using the Academic Bridge. Lots of different options for you. And we are always happy to discuss what you're thinking about and how to incorporate your ideas into your practice. So I know that was a lot of information, but let's summarize what we're looking at. So as a professional, you have a lot of different options. You know how play attention sets you apart from any other program available. You can incorporate the play attention professional system if you want to do one-on-one -on -one sessions. You can incorporate iLab if you're ready to expand to small groups or distance training. If you need an assessment tool to really enhance what you're doing, we do have the focus assessment available. Uh, you can also start incorporating some of those mindfulness apps. 
And you can also consider becoming a certified provider so that you can take some of that burden off of yourself and use some pre-made materials that will really allow you to get information out to your compute to your community on what you are providing. Okay, so I hope that gave you a lot of information to consider. And if you would, we'll be reaching out to everyone and uh, sending out consultation forms where you can input what you're interested in. However, if you do want us to go ahead and follow up with you on specific areas now, if you're ready to start or expand your program, you can simply type in your phone number and one of our advisors will give you a call back um, to discuss your next steps. So you can just type in your phone number. If there's a specific day or time you need a call back, just let us know that as well. If you want to go ahead and, and set up that consultation, and you want us to send you the consultation link right away so that you can schedule a time to talk about some of these areas that you want to incorporate, please do type in consultation. And also, if you want more information on any of those areas we discussed today, professional, iLab, focus, mindfulness, certified provider, you can just type in that as well or all of the above. Now, I do notice that some of you, and Dan, you asked about um, different outcomes of play attention, and that is really um, explained very well in our Play Attention 101 webinar or in a personal consultation where we can talk to you about play attention specifically and everything that we can um, provide within a play attention session for your clients. So if you have not done our Play Attention 101 webinar as of yet, you really haven't seen Play Attention and learned about the educational uh, foundation of Play Attention and how Play Attention actually works, then you may want to do a consultation or you could type in 101 webinar and I'll send you the recording of that webinar because that's going to take you all the way through Play Attention the body wave technology, uh, the inspiration from NASA and how that evolved, uh, that neurocognitive training. Um, so I would be happy to send that 101 webinar to you because that is a very good webinar on just explaining the whole program and the process. I am going to uh, let you type in your requests uh, so I am going to keep that chat box up there. So I'll watch to see if anyone has additional questions they want addressed now. Um, and uh, But I'll leave a little bit of time here so everyone can get their questions in and their requests because there are a lot of requests coming in right now. I really do appreciate your time today. And it's been a great group. I appreciate you um, listening to all of the information. I know that it can be a, a lot if you are new to Play Attention, and this was a lot of information on all of your different options. That's why I think the consultations will be uh, really important so that we can talk about what you're doing currently, or what you want to do, your goals, and really help you design the best play attention program possible. Also, uh, if you are a current play attention uh, professional or a play attention provider, I really appreciate you coming today. And I hope that even if you've been using the program for many years, which a lot of you here today have been using Play Attention for many years. I hope it just gave you a time to reflect on everything you're doing and other uh, options for you that you may want to incorporate. All right, I am going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to turn off my video, but I'll leave the chat box up a little bit longer because people are still typing in requests but please do know we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And we so appreciate your time today. Take care, everyone. And we look forward to chatting with you again very soon.